Hi, it's Steve with T Quilts, and today we're going to actually quilt a quilt on the quilt butler. All right, guys, I have a quilt top already on my frame, and if you all are needing to know how to load onto a long arm system, just let me know, and I'll make a separate video for that. I just want to come on and show you how to do a basic edge to edge on the quilt butler, and then you can uh, so you can see how this system works and see if it's the right one for you. On my quilting frame, I have already loaded my quilt top and I use the leader grip system to do that. I actually float my quilt top. As you can see right here, this quilt is not on the top rail of my gamel system. It's just hanging free. And so I have it basted along the sides, both sides, and all the way down the quilt, and then all the way to the other side. So we're going to be quilting this quilt today. We're going to be doing an edge-to-edge -edge design. And so I am just going to see if I can get my camera situated here so we can put you onto the screen. And then when I need to pull this over, I have a stool over here, so I'm trying to go around this stool, but yes, <laughs> here we go. Zoom you in, and I will have to say that since I don't have perfect stitch, that I also have issue when I'm logging in. I have to like do the process twice, and then the second time it actually lets me in because I don't have perfect stitch, and perfect stitch is the software name that they use to actually get you into the system, and perfect stitch if your system is not regulated actually gives you regulated stitching okay so on the screen it's telling me that I need to move my machine to the back left corner of your quilting area and that's normally where most people will do a hard back end, back left end, and then they'll go all the way down their frame until it's actually at the far back left of the frame system and I was trained that way by the lady that showed me how to do it, but I have since changed it uh, just a little bit for me to make it easier. So what I end up doing is I use the edge of my fabric. I push it all the way back, and I just use the edge of my fabric. And so I will put the end of my presser foot along the edge of my fabric. So for me, it's actually going to be the little frayed ed edges down there because right here on the white, I don't have any fray edges. So this is just letting it know how large is your quilting area. So I'm back up here on the screen, I'm going to hit a plus. And then it's going to tell me, move your machine to the front right corner of your quilting area then press the plus button so the right front is down here as far up as i can go so i am going to just point this camera down that way and then take my machine down i'm coming down to the far right corner and this is as far forward as i can come and then i'm going to go to the edge of my material put my the edge of my presser foot right there and I'm going to hit that check so when I come back down it tells me the width of my table or my quilting area and it also tells me the height as to how much patterns that I can quilt in a single pass and so right here I've got that 17.22 inches that's how wide I can quilt based on how I've got my machine set and basically I'm just going to hit a check mark to just get rid of that now some people they don't they set their table height so that it's right at the edge of their quilt 
or it's right here on the edge of their quilt. I don't do that because I like to do a different pattern box when I'm, do when I'm doing my quilting. So over here on this left, you're going to have these menus that we're going to use. We've got layout, patterns, edit, and home. Those are going to be the most important ones that we're going to use while we're working on an edge to edge. And then over on this side, when I'm in layout, I can do a new layout. I like to change the entire thing where I tell it a whole different area of where I'm quilting. We've just told it that, so this is okay. This is where you can open a previous layout, and we'll talk about that in a second, because here is where you can save a layout, and we'll talk about that. We've got, you can add another pattern box. You can delete a pattern box. You can modify a pattern box. And this one, I'm not really sure. Let's see. You can press the info button over here and then press a button. And it says reset the quilt area. So that one's reset the quilt area. And then we also want to know what this, just making sure, modify the current pattern box. And that's the one that I use the most. Okay. So when we first start, we want to make a pattern box. Even though we've told it what our quilt area is, now I want to go right up to my quilt top and say, this is where I want this pattern to start. And this is where I want this pattern to stop. So up here on the screen, I'm going to hit the plus for creating a new pattern box. And then it says, set the first point in the pattern box. And when I do that, I'm going to hit this plus. So down here on my quilt, I like to make my pattern box so that it's one quarter of an inch above and one quarter of an inch away. So I just use my hopper foot because my hopper foot is one quarter of an inch all the way around. So I just make it so that it's one quarter of an inch above, one quarter of an inch to the left. I'm going to hit the plus button up here on my screen. And then it says set the next point in the pattern box. Since I'm doing a rectangle, if I was doing a triangle, I would do three points. But since I'm doing a rectangle, it knows where I'm starting. And I'm just going to go back down to the right edge of my quilt. When I go down to the end, I'm going to set my hopper foot one quarter of an inch off on the right side. But then I'm also going to back it up about three quarters of an inch. And the reason I do that is because as we roll up our quilt top on the take up bar, we may lose some quilting space as we're actually quilting. So I'm over here. I'm down as far as I can go. I'm one quarter of an inch off the edge and I want to back it up three fourths of an inch. And then I'm going to hit the check mark because I don't have any more points to make at this point and we'll talk about in future videos as i do more videos what that means so now i just want you to see the screen the first pattern box we had was when i did the edge of my backing fabric and now this is telling me exactly where my quilt top is so now that we have our pattern box as i said we next go from layout to pattern so we're going to go ahead and click on patterns. Now, when I got the system, it did come with, I think they advertised it as 250 designs. My person that I got it from gave me 900 and something designs because she kind of went online and got all of the free designs that you could get. And then I also have purchased designs. There are designs that you can purchase in packages and you can also pack purchase designs individually. So I purchased some designs so that I would have some choices because me personally, I did not like a lot of the designs that I got for free. A lot of the designs were great when you have quilts of valor quilts or patriotic quilts. That's where most of your free designs are. But I wanted to have some more in my repertoire. So I went and purchased more designs. So I already know what design I'm going to use. So even on this um, patterns page, you've got patterns. It'll tell you what recent ones you've used if you hit that tab. So these are the recent patterns that I've used. And then you can import and export patterns, which we'll talk about in future video. 
and then you can also tag your patterns where you're putting them into the various categories over here so if I know that I'm only wanting to choose from pantos then I can choose from pantos but I'm gonna go back up to the top and I already know my pattern name I'm just going to use pattern called bubbles And then I hit the check mark after I type that in and it pulls up any patterns that have the word bubbles in it. And so since I'm doing an edge to edge design, I already know that I want the bubbles border to border. So I have it highlighted. And then over here, I have a check mark. I could also do smart size, but I never do the sizing in here. And then I can also X out of here to say I, I made a mistake. I don't want to be in here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the check mark. So now we have our bubbles here. Notice that our first pattern box is now gone down here. It's even telling me that it's in pattern box two of two and that's the one where I made my quilt top. So everything is fine. Notice when I hit layout over here, all of the different options I have over here. This one is to tell how many repeats you want in a pattern. This is to move your pattern if you want. This is to rotate your patterns, number three. Number four is to size your patterns. Number five here is to crop your patterns. This one here shows you the entire quilt top layout, which I will be using. And then this one is point to point design, which we'll be using in some different ones. And this is text that you can also add in. We'll be doing in some future videos. So we're mostly going to be working on this side. We also have all of these features over here. But the main thing we will, we will be using over here for this panto is undo and redo. So let's go ahead and put our pantos in. So the first thing up here is the number of repeats we want. So you can press the number of repeats that you want to fill your pattern and you can see here that we are limited in space. We're not gonna be able to get the next one in, but I do want that next one in. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit seven. And now it's hanging off of the, the system. Another thing is my starts and goes. So I can see where I'm going to be starting on the quilt, but I'm not going to worry too much about that on this particular design because it's a circle and it's going to enclose itself. If I was working on another pattern where it would start on my quilt top as compared to starting out on the edge, then I may want to crop this so that it wouldn't start in the middle of my quilt. But right now we're not going to talk about any of that. We're just going to do a straight panto today. So now you can see that my, my quilt design is hanging over the edge of my quilt. Also, this is the size of the pattern that it came, that it was designed in, that it was digitized in. And my background, which I'm not sure if you can see, let me zoom in. It has a grid background and every one of those squares lets you know that that's an inch of quilting space. So if I count this, I'm looking at a pattern that is approximately nine inches when it's going to quilt out. And I'm okay with that for this particular quilt. And I'm now going to handle how it's hanging off the edges. So we're just gonna use the size that came into the quilt and now we want to handle the edges. So we want to now go to sizing, which is our fourth icon down. When we get to sizing, we have an auto size here. This is the auto sizing that I like to use, but over here it has a lock. And if I auto size now, it's going to make it so that it feels this way and that way. And I want to keep the integrity of the design. So I'm going to hit this lock key and then tell it to auto fill. So you can see now how it has taken my pattern and made it so that it fits exactly onto my quilt top. 
However, it did move down in the pattern box, which means if it's moved down in a pattern box, that's exactly where it's going to stitch out on your quilt top. And that's not what we want. So I want to now go to move. So I hit the second icon, the plus up there, and I've got this icon here that tells it to move it completely to the top. If I wanted to move it little bit by little bit, I could press this button. But if I hit this one, it'll take it all the way up to the top, which is what I want. So now I'm going to temporarily go back into repeat because I want to tell it to give me a second vertical row. So the reason why I did that is because I wanted to see if the design was going to stitch out appropriately. So if I zoom in just by squeezing my screen, I can see that it's not touching the circle that's up above it. I actually want those to touch. And so what I'm going to do is go over here to spacing. So I've zoomed in so we can see this is where my repeat is for my second line. And I am going to tell it to, no, we're over here. I'm sorry, we're on the vertical. And I'm going to tell it to minus until they touch. And so now you can see up here on the screen that they touch. And the reason why I want them to touch is because all the other bubbles are touching in the row above. So now that I have it where I want it to touch, I am now going to take that second row off because I can't, stitch two rows at one time. The next thing we're gonna do is go to our full pattern, the full quilt layout here. And down here at the bottom, it's asking for quilt length. And quilt length is not the quilt length as to how long you have it onto the frame system. It's how much it goes from here down to the bottom down here right here and so my quilt top is 60 and a half inches lengthwise which is on my frame by 48 and a half inches so i need to go into here and tell it that my quilt top is 48.5 and then i'm going to hit the check mark and when i did that based on the size of my row up there it's telling me that it can do that 4.8 times. Now I want my quilting to end right on the edge of my quilt. I don't want to do 4.8 passes. So you either want to round up or you want to round down. And in this instance, I am actually going to round up. So I'm going to take that 4.8 and I'm going to make it five and I'm going to hit a check mark. And then up here, this changed the size just a tad so that it would all fit. And if I want to see how my entire quilt's going to look, I can hit this nine patch button over here and it's going to show me all five of those rows up here on my screen. Just to show you how it's going to look when it's quilted out. And it knows from me going back into sizing and moving that it knows exactly where I want to put those rows so that they touch it kept that row spacing here of negative 0.1 i could also tell it to reduce by so much for quilt shrinkage but i'm using like a cotton batting i don't feel like i'll have that much shrinkage on the end and if it goes off just a little i'm okay with that i just don't want it to go off like half of a quilt pattern or 25 percent of a quilt pattern so i'm okay with if it goes off a half inch to an inch off of my quilting design. So right here, we can take this part off and now we're ready to start stitching. So, so as I said over here, you we're actually going from layout to patterns to edit and now we're going to home. Except if I have a power outage and I've done all of this calculating of where this design is, I now want to save it. Edit over here has a save, but it's only saving your pattern. It's not saving your layout of where you got your quilt backing, where I have my pattern starting. It's just taking this number of passes to save. So what I want to do is save everything. So I'm going to go to layout and then at layout, 
I'm going to hit the this button, the save button, the third one down, and then it asks you for a name. So I'll just say TM space rail fence, scrappy rail fence. I don't know what I'm calling this quilt yet, but that'll do for me to get it saved into the system. And down here, you can see where it says my layout was saved before it disappeared. So now we can go back over here and go up to home. So we can now go to the final stage before we quilt. So on the home screen, again, you've got the home over here I hit, and then you've got this right side that populates. So the green button will tell it to go. This button is a stop button, your number two, the red button. This is our needle button. If we don't press that needle button, it's not going to uh, actually engage the needle. It's just going to outline stitch where it would be normally stitching, just to show you that something's going to fit. I have had an occasion where I've had to use that, so I do like that feature that you can turn your needle off and it will go through the motions of like it's stitching. Here we have our vertical channel locks although it looks like it's horizontal remember i told you in the previous video that they're switched and this is actually my horizontal channel lock and then it has diagonal and then you can put whatever degree you want and then this last button here is very important it's when we need to nest and nest is when we're actually going to roll the quilt and you need to nest so they know exactly where you need to start on your next round okay so we want to make sure that we put the needle on. We want to make sure that our needle is in the up position. And what I tend to do is on this screen here, you can see as I'm moving my machine that it moves. And so I try to get my machine close to the start point as possible. And I'm trying to wait for this to, so you can see it. I try to get it to the start point as much as possible. And let me move this again just so you can see this moving. Okay. And I don't have to. I could put this machine so that it started all the way back here. And then the robotics will make it move over here to the start point. But that's just a waste of my time, especially if I'm on the far end of the quilt. It's just quicker for me to bring it into a close enough area of where it's going to start. Then that way I'm not wasting time waiting for it to figure out where it's going to start. So that's my start point for right now. I have it in the position. This is my thread here. One thing I do need to do is I want to add on my side my side <clears throat> so I have installed my side grips and you don't want to pull these so tight that they um, make it so that your back puckers or your quilt will draw up you just want to put a little tension there and that's it you don't want to go overboard so now that I have my machine I have it approximately in the area of where it's going to start. I'm going to go up here and all I'm going to do now, since I have my needle already highlighted, is I'm going to hit the green button. But I'm going to hit the green button, but I want to point you down so you can see what it does. So here I am hitting the green button. And then let me take you back up. I forgot it has another message. It says this machine will move to the start of the pattern box and the pattern will start. Verify that the needle is in the up position. Now I do like that because there are times where you can forget that you have your needle in the down position and this thing is still going to try to move so it's going to rip and tear your quilt because it's a computer. It's only doing what you tell it to do. So I do like that they give you this warning notice. I do have everything ready to go. I had to make sure my system back there was ready and we can now go ahead and hit the check mark here. And when I hit the check mark here, it's going to start moving down on the bottom. So I'm going to tell it I'm ready. And so it just moved a little because 
I had it into the approximate place of where it was going to start. So I've just pulled up my bobbin thread, which it also told me up there. So it did a single stitch. It says pull up the bobbin thread and then press OK. So that's what I did. And now it's going to do the tacking stitches. So I hit the check mark. And now it's going to do four tacking stitches, which is what I have it set at. And then it's going to start quilting. And remember, I have this set so that it stitches about a quarter of an inch off the edge of my frame. So I will let you see a little bit of this stitching and then I am going to take you off and then I'll come back when we're near the end of the quilt. So we'll come back toward the end. Okay, so we're getting close to doing our last set of circles. And so at the end, it does the tacking stitch at the end. And notice that I have my needle down position set on my Gamma Vision. So I need to make sure that I don't try to move this machine without raising my foot. Up here, all the computer knows right now is that you have done stitching this row. And so it's just stopped. So what I need to do is pull up my bobbin thread and tie off. So that's what I'm going to do next. Gonna raise my needle, come back and take a single stitch so I can bring up that bobbin and then I'm going to clip that off. Okay. Now, it still doesn't know exactly what I'm doing. It, I could be done as far as this computer system is uh, concerned. What I need to do now, so the computer system doesn't know exactly what it is that I want to do next, and so I have to tell it what I want to do next. And so that is 
with me doing the nesting. And that's these hearts down here on the bottom. I want to tell it that I want to roll my quilt and I want to continue to stitch this same pattern. And so that's what I'm going to click is the nesting. Down here it says select and mark your nesting point. And what the nesting point is, is one of the lowest part points on your quilt top. And so that's where I want to mark. So I think I'm going to go back down to the end of my frame. I'm walking with the tripod, guys. <laughs> and I want to make it so that I am on the bottom most point of this circle. And I may need to mark that. Some designs you don't have to mark if it's a point down on the bottom, but with me sitting on the flat part of a circle, I need to know exactly where it is that I'm going to be marking. So I'm going to get a pen and mark this area down on my quilt. So I'm going to put you down on the quilt to where I'm at. And I'm going to take a pencil and I'm going to move this just a little bit so I know that I'm on my nesting point. And I am going to go in here and I'm going to mark a circle right up under and this pencil is not going to show up on camera but I know it's there. So that's going to be my nesting point. The next step is I need to roll my quilt on my frame and so I have to take off my side clamps here. I have to take off my magnetic pieces that are holding my quilt top flat because I'm floating my quilt and I will do that all the way down and then I'm going to roll my quilt top and so I'm just going to leave you here to watch what I'm doing further down So now I want to baste my sides again because I just moved. I'm going to make sure that everything is nice and flat, my batting and my quilt top. And I'm going to baste my sides down. So I'm going to come back down here and I'm also going to baste this side down.
this point, I now put back on my side clamps. And then I'll have to also go to the other end to put that side clamp on as well. Again, don't pull your side clamp so tight that you're stressing your backing fabric. And I'm going to go do the same thing on this end. Again, I come back, make sure I don't have any puckers. I also want to make sure that I'm not stitching in any stray threads. So I also check for those. And if I have anything in here, I get those out. Most times when you're doing string quilts or scrappy quilts, you will have a lot of threads that are coming through the seams. So I don't want to stitch those in. Okay. So now up on the screen, it told us to select and mark our nesting point and we did that Okay, and if I go back up to the screen now, I can go ahead and hit the check mark. I marked my nesting point. After that, it tells you to roll the quilt. And you don't want to hit the check mark for roll the quilt until you've actually rolled the quilt because the computer system will know. And so now I've rolled the quilt. And so now I'm going to tell it. <laughs> Okay, so this is a good learning point. I forgot to hit the button to tell it that I had rolled my quilt. And so now when I tell it where my nesting point is, which is right here, it's all the way up here on the screen. So that was my mistake. I should not have done that. So what I have to do now is unroll the quilt and do this whole process again. So what I'm going to have to do is now X out of this <laughs> okay, and so what I'm going to do is roll my quilt back. This is a good learning point because I had to learn this um, myself. So I'm going to roll this quilt back and then I'll come back. Okay, so we want to go into edit because I want to tell it that I want to move my start point so i'm going to go to move which is the second icon down and then down here on the bottom it says move start and it says on here move the machine to where you would like the pattern to start and press ok so on my down here my pattern started somewhere in this particular area so i'm going to tell it to kind of start where it kind of started before and I am guessing a little bit, so I'm hoping that this will work out. In other patterns, you have a defined start and stop. With this being a circle, it's a little bit more difficult to do that. So I got it in the position that I wanted to start, and I'm going to hit check mark. And so that's all that the machine has done is moved the screen. It was up here at first, and now it's down here to where I gave it my check mark. I'm very close to the beginning. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to go back to home and I now want to tell it that I'm ready to start. So I'm going to press the green button and it says the machine will start just like it does every other time. It says verify that the needle is in the up position. It is. So I'm going to hit the start and what it's going to do is take one stitch for me to bring up that bobbin thread okay so then I'm going to hit okay 
and then it's going to start trying to stitch and to do the lock and I'm going to stop it. So the reason why I'm stopping it is because I'm going to try to tell it that I have now stitched the entire row. So by taking that one stitch, it thinks that it's now, it knows it's in the right position. And so now I can go ahead and roll the quilt and do my nesting all over again. So I want to tell it to stop. So now it's completely out of that. I'm going to not worry about pulling up my bobbin down here but what I'm going to do now is tell it that I want to nest because it knows now where my position is so we're going to do that whole nesting thing again where I am now going to tell it where my nesting spot is sorry guys about this camera on this tripod trying to move it so you all can see so now I'm going to go back to this nesting point that I had before and I'm going to tell it that I'm nesting right there with a check mark. And now it tells me to roll the quilt. And that's what I'm going to do. So we've been here before. <laughs> I've already basted the sides down so I don't have to do that. This is how you correct the error of rolling or not rolling when you're supposed to. So now I've rolled the quilt. I've come back to my screen and I can tell it that I've rolled the quilt. And now it's going to say move the machine to your nesting point. And that's the point that I just had it at. But I also want to put my side clamps back on. Okay, so we have now rolled the quilt, got our side clamps on, and I will say that, you know, it's a lot to record all of this and not forget a step, but I wanted, I'm glad that I missed this step because if you do this and you will do it, you know how to correct it when you're at home working on your own system. So, now that we have moved the quilt to our nesting position is what it wants us to do now, and that's that spot that I marked down here at the bottom of that circle and I'm not going to be able to hold you and do that at the same time because I got to lean in here and see where it's at that little white mark and so I am going to put my needle down to make sure I'm there and I am and I'm just going to put a check mark and then it also comes up with another screen Say if you didn't nest exactly where you want it, you can zoom in and I can see that I'm exactly on my circles where I want to be. Right here, I am right on the circle right here compared to the half circle that's up above it. So I am exactly in the right place. So all I need to do is hit check mark. But if I wasn't, I could use go back into the move feature and move it up or down as I need to. But for right now, for me, it's just a check. And it doesn't really tell you anything once you've done nesting. The whole process of nesting is complete. All I need to do now is go up and hit my start button and it will work appropriately. Okay, so let me go ahead and stitch this out. And then when we do the next nesting, I'll do nesting one more time and we'll do it correct. <laughs> okay, without the interruption. 
So we have finished stitching out our second row. Again, I wanted to show you how you are really supposed to nest. And my needle has stopped in a down position, so I'm going to lift that up so I can pull up the bobbin thread. And now I am going to go ahead and hit the nesting button on my screen here. And the message down here says select and mark your nesting point. So we are going to go do that. So I'm walking down the quilt. Again, we are going to mark this circle here in a spot down here. We're going to mark this bottom uh, of this circle, which you can see up here. I'm going to just go back up a little bit. You can see by my crosshairs where I'm positioned and I'm going to mark that mark and then I will come back. So I hit the check mark to say where my nesting point was and my camera did not come on at that point. Sorry about that. And now it's telling me to roll the quilt. And this is where you actually roll the quilt. I've waited on that previous screen where it says mark your nesting point. I didn't hit the check mark after I marked my nesting point. So now I'm going to go ahead and roll the quilt and then I'll be right back. All right, so we are back and we are getting very close to the end of this process. I have just rolled the quilt. I basted my sides down and I put on my side clamp. So now I can go ahead and tell it check mark that I have rolled the quilt. Now it says move the machine to your nesting point. And my nesting point is down here where I have put my little, it's like a little white chalk mark that you can't hardly see, but I can see it. So my needle is right over that point. I can go ahead and tell it check. Then it says, move the machine to place the nested row. And I can just zoom in here and I see that where these rows are supposed to touch, they are touching. So I don't need to do any moving. I just go ahead and hit the plus mark. And then it just pops back to the regular screen. Green lights up here highlighted because it's telling me now that it's ready to start stitching. So this would be me stitching my third row. Remember that we told it we wanted a total of five rows. So I'm going to stitch my third, fourth, and I'm going to come back when we're stitching the fifth row because I want you to see what happens at the bottom if you tell it what size your quilt top is. And also, I will let you see that this is the back of my quilt. It's starting to show now because I've got red thread on the white showing, which is what my bobbin is. And I just wanted you to see what the stitching design looked like a little bit, but I will come back when we're in stitching our fifth row. All right. So we are on the last row of this quilt top. And up here on the screen, let me pull you up to the screen. All right, we are on the last row of the quilt top and I'm showing you the screen. This is where my final row is. And what I'm going to do is pull the crosshairs down until it's at the bottom of bottom row of this quilt. And I'm gonna scoot it over about center on the bottom. Then I wanna show you with us putting in the measurements of our quilt, how close we are to being right along the edge of the quilt. It's about, let's go back so I can measure. I'd say it's about a half an inch away from the edge. And then what I do is I just like to go down and see how much, when I'm in a different portions of the quilt top, that it would be on the edge. And right there, I'm about a quarter of an inch away from the edge. Right here is the bottom, and I am about three-eighths of an inch. So, if I'm short, what I do is I just, and it's less than that half inch, 
then I will go ahead and enlarge on my screen just by touching I want to go into edit and then when I touch it on edit so over here I went to edit and then I just take it and I can pull this down just a tad and then I go back and put it along the edge of my quilt top to see exactly where it is on the screen so here's just a little bit too big and I can go to resize it I'm gonna go over here to to So I can go on to the sizing and then I can make it just a tad smaller. So while I was doing that, I actually um, lost power my battery ran out so what I want to do is um where I think I want my end to be and so I want to put the bottom row of these circles even with the bottom the horizontal crossbar and so I want to put the end of these circles where that blue line is for the crossbars and it's just a little moving it just a tad and so that way where I'm a half inch off it'll be about I'll be a quarter inch short and where I was a quarter inch short I will be exactly on the edge of the quilt top and when I square it up all of it will be in the quilting so I just wanted to show you that that how close you can be if you put the size of your quilt top into the system I don't have to do any partial rows where I am stitching off the quilt and another reason why I don't want to do that is because I made these quilt backs long time ago and I was quilting on my home sewing machine and so I didn't have enough space here to have it quilt off of the frame and then I just prefer to quilt whole rows instead of half so i'm going to go ahead and start quilting this and i will see you with um the completed quilt top so i'm coming on to just show you where we are with the finishing on the ends and where the quilting actually stopped so I've got a circle coming off right there. This circle is ending right along the edge. This circle here uh, came off about a quarter of an inch and that's okay. Long as it's not up more than half an inch. And so I will just be trimming off just that little. So you can see how close you can get to putting your quilt top in. And if you put the measurements in, then you can get a set number of rows that you complete instead of having half rows so I really like that about this system and so I'm just going to go ahead and end this video here because I I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here and you will see this completed project in my April finishes at the end of the month and so I want to go ahead and get the binding made so I can put it on the quilt while it's on the frame. And I may not get that done in time to get this video uploaded. But I just wanted to share this process with you. I'll be doing more Butler videos. And if you got any questions about Butler, if you got the Butler system and need some assistance, 
I'm new to the system, but I am learning a lot every day. And so I don't mind helping you if I know how to do it. I will most definitely assist you. So I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you all so much for watching. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Share my channel with your other quilting friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye, T-Quilters. Stay blessed.